Most people have not seen trafficators before. That is just too cool. And they're fully lit the whole bit. That's great. That is great. And of course you have them on the left side also. Correct. I know. And so few people know what it is. It's great. This is an amazing car. I don't know. There's semaphore. Semaphore. Yeah. 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 Now, it took you two years. What? Three. Three. What inspired you to build one? You. Yes, she is. Well, uh... <laughs> Don't say anything dirty. We, we, uh... We restore Land Rovers. Uh-huh. Not for profit. In fact, uh, it's yeah. quite the opposite. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And we've restored virtually every one of the series Rovers. Series uh -huh. one, two, three, Defender. Mm-hmm. And uh, several years ago, I was saying to myself, what's going to be our next project? What haven't we built? And I, I sort of got the idea that the whole line of Land Rovers began in 1947 with the prototype, mm -hmm. which does not exist. Mm -hmm. So I suggested to the boys, let's build the prototype. And we weren't sure we could, but with a variety of... of uh, assistance from all sorts of disciplines, computer world, metal work, I mean everything. Mm -hmm. We managed to build this thing and it was quite a job. Uh, it was an awful lot of fun and I would likely never do it again. Now of course. Because it was just quite a task. It really was. Now what uh, the original I read on your storyboard was based off of a Jeep. Correct. The original one was built in 47. The war was over. Mm -hmm. The British were in very bad financial shape. Right. And there was no Land Rover, but there was a Rover car company. Right. Very, very good company that made big, beautiful cars. Mm -hmm. And the engineers said, we've got to do something like the Americans. They won this war with the Jeep. Let's build something like that. Uh -huh. So they went out and they found a Jeep chassis in the wheel. Right. And they took one of their rover car engines and put it on that and transmission. Mm -hmm. And then they built this all aluminum body on it and that was the very first prototype. Now they never built a Jeep type vehicle though. Well, that's what this is. It, exactly. It is, it is a Jeep type vehicle. But it was a one off or just but a few were made. The prototype was never further beyond that one. Right. They immediately went into the production of the Series 1 in 1948. Correct. And this vehicle happens to be no less than the 149th Land Rover ever built. Wow. Yeah, it's amazing that they went with such of a, you know, from such a small type design of uh, that to the Series 1. Notice the uh, brilliant cinematography I'm doing right now. <laughs> so it gets really, uh, it was really quite interesting. Now, you know, I could see the similarities going in because I didn't realize Absolutely. that the Series 1 was that small Absolutely. of a vehicle. Yes. The and truth is they were, they were developing them simultaneously. Right. And so when they realized they wouldn't proceed with the prototype type vehicle, mm -hmm. they had already had the Series 1 well in development. Oh, ah, okay. And then they continued. Yeah, the Series 1 actually looks like a simpler vehicle to build because of it the is. flat panels and you're, such. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So that is great. That is great. And what you have here, it represents 70 years of progression between that vehicle and this and one this. right here. Yes. <laughs> yes. And going strong, which is amazing. They are. The only yeah. thing is, though, is that the Germans tried to bomb the living daylights out of it. They did now they. They did a pretty good job, yeah. too. And now they bought it. <laughs> so, with a quick shot, now look at your uh, connection. Very interesting is that the Jeeps, American Jeeps, were built by three companies, remember? Yes, they were. Okay. You're right. Including Willys Ford. Ford. Yes, and the, the chassis on the prototype uh -huh. is actually from a Ford GPW Jeep uh, model. Very good. So, yes, so you're right. Sir, your prototype actually foresees the ownership of Rover with Ford. It's an interesting way to look at it. <laughs> Six <laughs> degrees of separation yes. in the automotive world. Yes. This yes. is great. This is great. 
Do you want to show me any other features on the uh, prototype? What would you like to see, of course? Anything unusual? Let's pop the well, hood. The, uh, the most unusual feature on the prototype, of course, is the central steering wheel. Yes. Now, the reason they did that, it was an interesting idea. And, and again, the British financially needed to make money right after the war, the post-war period. Correct. And so they said, we've got to export these vehicles. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to deal with right hand, left hand drive. Ah. Let's put it in the middle. Right. And it was a great idea, but it really didn't work out too well. Yeah. So they yeah. finally moved it over to a more conventional position. Yes. The, uh, basically, the vehicle is the Jeep Foundation. Uh huh. Under the hood is a. <laughs> is a rover car engine and this is a 1947 mm -hmm. rover car engine which is exactly what they used and the transmission is a rover car transmission but they had to couple the driving of the wheels which right. is accomplished by the transfer case mm -hmm. with a jeep transfer case so to marry those two the rover transmission and the jeep transfer case that was a real trick for us mm -hmm. also we had to build a special adapter plate to be able to do mm -hmm. that, but we, we were very successful. And you had to be within a fraction of an inch, oh, otherwise you'd burn through clutches. <laughs> yes. Yes. My friend Miss Finney knows all about that. That is beautiful. A little four-cylinder. Yes. Very nice. Jeez, the other beautiful. interesting features, I guess, wow. are found inside. You can see with the Series 1, I'm going to do a quick over there. With the bizarre setup of the clutch on the left side oh my gosh and then the brake and the gas on the right that's side. insane it is it's very uncomfortable which is another reason it didn't survive for very long and then oh this my very gosh. unconventional setup for the gear shifting yes and then this is a, just a typical jeep emergency brake uh -huh. you'll find hybrids like that this is a Rover wow. car steering wheel, which is exactly what they use. Uh huh. And they're very simple and and uh, I think elegant dash yes. metal. A Jeep speedometer, and then the rest are English gauges. Uh huh. Uh, and one seat. And the idea was farmers could use it. They could put things in the back, in the front, mm -hmm. and everywhere. And, and it's an interesting concept. Wow. This is something else. Now I notice that on the uh, frame, you have some welding marks. Oh yeah. Did you do that on purpose or? Well, everything was for a reason, and it probably has. Oh, I see. That's the cross member that I'm yes, saying. Okay. Yes. Okay. Wow. Boy, what a job! Oh my gosh. Well, thank you. This is phenomenal. It was a lot of fun. Oh, I'm sure. It was a lot of fun and. And the research yeah, must have been research. insane. My son, who is a computer expert, uh, provided us computer programs which allowed us to bring all of the old pictures of this vehicle uh -huh. into the computer, and then we were able to get measurements and curves and distances. And that is so great. So we, we brought a lot of different distances. Hold on one second. Uh, he's going to be for a while. A lot oh, of different disciplines came to bear mm -hmm. on, on building this uh, successfully. Oh, this is great. This is great. And compared to this uh, Series 1, that is remarkable. What a difference, I'll tell you, though. Big difference. Yes, indeed. I agree. You know, because the Land Rover really took over. This was the vehicle to explore with. Oh, absolutely. It really out -jeeped the Jeep, which was pretty remarkable. It, it did in many ways. It's interesting. And it had a worldwide presence. I mean, it is estimated mm -hmm. that that 40%, in 40% of the world's population, uh -huh. the first vehicle that they ever saw was a Land Rover. Wow. Because in so many areas, Africa, Australia, out in the in the bush, in the in, in areas where there are no vehicles, mm -hmm. that was the vehicle they first That saw. was it, yeah. yeah. Jeez, that is remarkable. 
Yeah, I never thought of it that extensive. Oh, I like that exhaust system. Jeez, that's surprising. The elegance, the elegance also, the simplicity, no external door handles. Right. Of the interior. Oh, brilliant. It's just so neat and simple and clean. And look at that, they group the pedals together. Yes, finally. It, yes. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> yes. Uh, perfect for the windshield wiper, just done. Just simple one. one. Yeah. Well, that's all you need. Period correct fire extinguisher. Very good. And Very then good. under the seats there are compartments and there's, there's mm -hmm. so it was a utility vehicle, truly. Yeah. Very, very tough. Yeah. Yeah, it's basically a Jeep yes. plus one actually. Yes, absolutely. Because I know the materials used for the body, uh, that's all aluminum. Uh, yeah. And it's a very heavy gauge aluminum too. Yes, very sturdy. So yeah. it does not rust. No. No. Uh, it, the only problem great. is the, the steel frame mm -hmm. where it joins with the aluminum can give you some issues. And, and you know, for us as restorers, that's where we always find problems. Ah, but, okay. But we get around that. Oh, because of the electrolysis, because exactly. of the two different metals yes. uh, me meeting up. This is really pretty cool. Wonderful. Just wonderful. I thank you very much for coming out and giving us a great tour. It's a pleasure. Oh, look at that power takeoff. Jeez! Isn't that something? That is amazing! And they all work. Wow. wow. And of course here they have a big leather belt which would run saws and all kinds uh -huh. of farm equipment. Water pumps, whatever. Yeah. And cool on the beans. front is a capstan winch, which very is good. very strong. Jacob, we should get out the rope and put it on the front so people Now, do you do um, restore this for uh, as a shop or just... Purely we as a, a hobby. We have a beautiful shop, but we we do not we do not do this for financial return. Very we good. do it because we like doing it. Very good. Because we love the vehicles, and uh, we'd like other people to see what these really look like. Mm -hmm. Now you're uh, with High Meadow Farms. Yes. Very yes. good. And where is that, please? That's in uh, Saxons River, Vermont. Very Little good. town in South Central Vermont. Really uh huh. Beautiful area. Uh -huh. We have a 200 acre horse farm, my wife and I. And oh, nice. We raise horses and we build land rovers. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. You've got horses and bulldogs right yes. there. I love it. I love it. Let me give you oh, we got the cards. Yes. You can go on our website. Very good. The website is www.highmeadowfarm.com. Rovers.com. You can see our com. entire collection. We have Good. all of the series vehicles and beyond. James, I'll put that on the video so this way people can copy it right down. Perfect. And visit. Good. So wonderful. I Terrific. thank you very much. My pleasure. This is Pam from NortheastWheelsEvents.com. Checking out James Really Outrageous, the Series 1, and as he says, the holy grail of Land Rovers, the prototype, the first one. And we're at the 2018 Import Carlisle. For more cool events like this, make sure you check NortheastWheelsEvents.com, SoutheastWheelsEvents.com, and UKWheelsEvents.com. And while you're there, make sure you post and share your events. I'll see you at the shows.